Is this even possible? Is this possible that the channel has now more than 1000 subscribers? I'm Leon from Air and Ground in Scale and I want to thank you from the bottom of my scale model's heart in one to one scale. Creating these almost weekly episodes is a lot of work, but I love it. And it's even better to share my experiences with you guys. Yeah, you guys. Today everyone is busy and looking at an Instagram post for just about a half a second. But you guys offer me much more and spend some minutes watching the episodes and perhaps let you inspire and motivate you to try out new techniques or new tools or in general enjoy our scale modeling hobby together. As a form of gratitude, I would love to give something back to you subscribers in the form of a giveaway. It is really easy to take part. Just subscribe to this channel and tell me which model kit is your all-time favorite one. Ok, choosing only one could be more difficult. There will be three subscribers who will be randomly selected and each one gets a giveaway. And what are the giveaways you ask? Something for the aircraft, tank and airbrush addicts. I'll show you, but hang on, first we have some work to do on the landing gear bay and other flaps and stuff. To get started, I use the Mr. Surfacer 1500 primer in black. I thin it down in about 50-50 ratio, color to thinner. As a thinner, I use Tamiya Lacquer Thinner, the one with a yellow cap. And I spray it with a bigger needle in the airbrush, like a 0.41. Then I airbrush the real base color which will be RLM02 from Mr. Hobby. I really like this shade and I thin it again with Tamiya lacquer thinner and spray it with the same airbrush. Now let's add some shadows with really thinned down colors. As a thinner I use alcohol because it evaporates real fast. I use a 0.15 needle in the airbrush and spray it over the details and in corners. I dry fit the parts to see where the shadows would be. After the dark there will be light. I use the deck tan and flat white again thinned down heavily with alcohol and sprayed with a precision airbrush. I sprayed in the middle of the surfaces and afterwards to tone down the contrast I spray the initial RLM02 over the shadows and highlights. The result is a nice variation. Sure the RLM02 has changed but in my opinion, weathering will result in different shades of standard colors in real aircrafts too. To pick out the details I use the dry brushing method. For this I use a very soft brush and in this case Tamiya colors. As you can see I take some paint and wipe it almost off. Then I brush gently over the details. It is a really nice accent to the surface and guides the viewer's eye. I think you realized by now that I use the same approach on the landing gear base as I use the same workflow in painting and weathering the cockpit. So next is a wash made from Abteilung 502 oil colors. I use a liner brush which can hold a lot of paint but is precise at the same time. It is ideal for this task. Yes, here I changed to the liner brush. The one before is a regular brush. As you can see the liner brush can hold much more paint. Oh. 
after the wash dried for an hour or so, I wiped the excess away with a cotton bud. Again, a very nice result. We are using all the techniques after another to create more contrast. A technique first which adds highlights, then adding shadows, then again adding highlights, then shadows and so on. And for sure, don't forget the chipping, which I do with a pencil. It is easy and precise. I try to outline some details by chipping, so the viewer can more easily read the surface. Now continuing with the weathering, I add some dirt with the enamel product from AK Interactive. But first, something more important. What is the giveaway? First we have a P47D25 in 1 to 48 scale from Hasegawa, coming directly from my stash waiting to be built. Now something for the tank aficionados, the E100 in 1 to 70 second scale. This little thing comes with PE parts and a metal barrel. That is incredible. And for the paint sniffers, I give you a color modulation set in dark yellow. This color set looks so juicy. Just look at these nice colors, these nice shades of desert yellow. This is a nice loot. Honestly, I don't want to give it away, but you guys deserve it because you suffer from my bad English. So subscribe and tell me in the comments what your all-time favorite model is. I'll present the winners in an upcoming episode. Now let's continue with the earth enamel. I paint it on, leave it for a few minutes, then I blend it with odorless thinner. I like to add the dirt more with enamels or oils. If I use pigments in such small spaces, I always mess it up. With this product I can work much more precise. Let's close up the wings and continue assembling the model. I add glue in every open spot to fill any holes. Later on I don't want the wash to disappear in these openings. Now that's what I love about the Edward kits. Just watch how good this cowling fits on the nose part. That is just pure plastic love. To fill the seams I use Mr. Dissolve Putty and apply it as precisely as possible with a toothpick and then when it's dry I'm going to sand it down. While drying I install some more flaps and rudders. So let's continue in the next episode where we finally get some paint on this aircraft. Again thank you very much for your support and I wish you just the best at your workbench, thanks for watching.